Welcome to Greater Harvest Church Ministry, where our motto is, Our Church is a Blessed Church, and where our pastor, Renardo Ward, has declared that he sees a greater harvest in your future. We are located in the wonderful city of Memphis, Tennessee, on the corner of Winchester and Boxdale. Our address is 3509 Boxdale Street, Memphis, Tennessee. 38118. We thank you for tuning in to view this video content, whether on our mobile app, website, YouTube, or Facebook page. We certainly are grateful that you chose Greater Harvest Church Ministry to feed your soul through prayer, worship, and the Word of God. And now, let's connect with today's broadcast. The scripture says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Who came to bless his name today? Well, I don't care what you've been through this week or what you've been through in life. We have a right and we have a reason to praise the Lord. So this song says, worship the Lord. Let's magnify his name. Let's lift him up above our problems, above our issues, above our troubles. Come on, put your hands together. Worship the Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray to His holy name. Come on and get up and worship, worship the Lord. Let's magnify. Let's magnify His name. You wanna worship, worship the Lord? Come on and pray. Let's pray to His holy name. You wanna worship, worship the Lord? Come on and magnify. Let's magnify His name. Let's go. 
Father, we just want to thank you today, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being so good to us, Heavenly Father, when we weren't good to ourselves. Heavenly Father, I ask that you look upon the preachers, Heavenly Father. Touch them and encourage them, Heavenly Father. All the preachers in this world and this nation, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just went through some awful stuff this evening, this, this week, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I'm asking that you pray for those families who lost loved ones, Heavenly Father. Encourage them, Heavenly Father. Lift them up, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I'm also praying for the one who did the crime, Heavenly Father, for he needs your help and guidance too, Heavenly Father. Lift them up, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, you see what, what kind of nation we in, Heavenly Father. Turmoil, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, ask us to bring peace, Heavenly Father. Peace and love to this nation, Heavenly Father. We need it, Lord. We need it, Lord. We need you. We just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I ask that you continue to bless this ministry, Heavenly Father, the people of this ministry, Heavenly Father, this community, Heavenly Father, this nation, this government, Heavenly Father. Lift them up, Heavenly Father, where they are down, Heavenly Father. Strengthen them, Heavenly Father. Strengthen them, Heavenly Father. We all we just say is thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for being so good to us, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Could it could have been one of us, Heavenly Father, but you spared us this week, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Bring peace to this nation, Heavenly Father. We are tired, Heavenly Father. We are tired. You said, come to you, Heavenly Father. You shall bring peace, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, I'm asking that you pray for all those sick, Heavenly Father. By your strength, you shall, we shall be healed, Heavenly Father. I just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You've been so good, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just, all I can just say, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You've been so good, Heavenly Father. You've been so good. 
so good to us, Heavenly Father. I just got to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you all these blessings in Jesus' sweet name. Thank God. Amen. If you would, turn to Psalms 150. Psalms 150. If you have it, say amen. Psalms 150 say, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the excellent greatness. Praise him for the sound of the trumpet. Praise him for the salt and the harp. Praise him with the temple and dance. Praise him with the string instrument and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let every breath, excuse me, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. If you just let me say that one more time. Let everything that has breath praise thee the Lord. Praise thee the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 I thank God uh, for the prayer this morning. I thank God for the song this morning. I thank God for keeping us this morning. As Deacon alluded to, this was a very trying and terrible week in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. And we stand with all those families that have been affected by death from uh, unseemly uh, acts of violence. Uh, and we thank God that he comforts us and keeps us even when destruction hits the land. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm asking you to please uh, continue to pray for those families, continue to pray for our cities. And I made a special appeal on Wednesday night during Bible study, uh, asking everyone to pray for pastors. There seems to be an attack unleashed on pastors. So I'm asking everyone to join me in praying for pastors. At 12 o'clock noon every day, we are to uh, go before the Lord, even if it's only for a couple of minutes, and pray together the Lord's Prayer at 12 o'clock. How many still do the Lord's Prayer at 12 o'clock every day? Amen. How many going to restart doing the, 12, the Lord's Prayer at 12? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so as you conclude that um, time of praying the Lord's Prayer, I want you to just whisper a prayer for pastors everywhere. Amen, great hours. Y'all so distracted. Y'all so easily distracted. You better be able to focus when you're being asked to do some spiritual warfare. Amen. Because it might not be the whirlwind. It might not be the chariots of fire. It might be a still, small voice. And you might miss it because you're looking at somebody doing something. Amen. But I'm asking you to pray for pastors. And I'll just give you a clue when you go back and look at uh, one of the strategies, enemy strategies in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, when the enemy could not come in and touch the people because God was using a man to warn the people, the enemy would turn his attack on the man. His goal was the people, but if I can get the man that God is using to speak life and deliverance and salvation to the people, then the people are be, will be easy prey. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, we got it together now. We, we, we got it together now. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so there are a couple of things, uh, several things that I really want to um, make you aware of. Uh, where are my deacons? There are a couple of things I really want to make you aware of. We have uh, made an appeal to you and asked you to bring in non-perishables for our food pantry as many of you as if you're a member you should already know if you are not a member and you're joining us online at this church we are concerned about the whole man amen amen we don't we don't uh take your need for food or shelter or clothing anything like that lightly uh we don't just pray to pray our salvation for you and say go on about your business we are concerned about the entire man and my deacons are coming because last Sunday I made an appeal a couple of weeks ago in Bible study I made an appeal that you all would bring in uh, non-perishables because our pantry supplies are low 
Uh, what we are able to receive from the Mid-South Food Bank is low. What we're able to receive from uh, the other programs, agencies, associations that we are with is low. And Greater Harvest, thank you for answering the call. Thank you for stepping up as the deacons are bringing out now just some of what you've done. Some of it has already gone into the supply. Some of it has already been given out to people in our community. Amen, amen. And when I talk to, amen, you can celebrate that. That's a good, good time to pause to celebrate. And so when I talk to uh, Missionary McGlown, who is running our pantry um, this week, she said, Pastor, our numbers are now up on everything except meat, but we got all of our supply is back to normal. So Greater Harvest, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping us, helping us minister to the community. And for those who are trying to figure it out, most of our pantry recipients, our pantry clients who come regularly, they have established a relationship here. We are a place that they regularly come for food. Most of our pantry clients are not members of this church, so we don't, we're not taking in food and then turning around and giving it right back to the same people who brought it in. Uh, I would say at over 95% of our pantry recipients are not members of Greater Harvest Church, and it's probably larger than that. I want to say 99, but to be safe, I'm going to say 95%. But let me tell you what we've done from January 1 to August 30, August 31st. From January 1 to August 31st, there were 3,325 times that somebody rang our doorbell needing food, and they got food. 3,325 times. And when I shared with you before that we don't just give them a meal, we don't just give them a sandwich when they come, we actually give them enough food for everybody in the house to eat for several days. And so what that has translated into as far as meals provided by Greater Harvest Church, meals provided by Greater Harvest Church, y'all ready for this number? You sure you ready? It's a big number. Y'all ready? Okay. The number of meals provided from January 1 to the end of August is 139,650 meals. That is when someone came to this church and said, I'm hungry, and we fed them. 139,650 meals, and the year is not over. It does, this not even includes September. So I want to uh, encourage you, number one, uh, to help when possible. Please help. Number two, if you know someone that's in need of food, uh, that, that does not have food to eat or doesn't have enough food to eat, you know where to direct them, right? Number three, if you are available uh, to come and help serve, to come and help minister, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9 a.m. to noon, please come and volunteer. You don't have to do all three days. You can do one day or you can do two days. Or you, can, you can say, I'll do the first Tuesday every month. You don't have to come every week, but we need your help. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank you, deacons. Come on, let's celebrate again the community ministry, our outreach ministry through our food pantry. And with that in mind, I am, I wish our missions uh, president was here uh, this morning, but with that in mind, I also want to say to you uh, that there is a great need in Jackson, Tennessee, I mean Jackson, Mississippi, and Greater Harvest, I am asking you today to get a missions offering ready if you're in person. All of our giving tabs will have a mission, um, tab, all of our giving platforms will have a mission tab on it today, uh, and we'll do it next week as well, but if you will Give what you can so that we can minister to the needs in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, that is very close to us, and it could have been us. 
and God has put us in a position where we can help our brothers and sisters uh, in our neighboring state. Amen. So we're going to do a missions off. Matter of fact, uh, these containers on the platform. Matter of fact, y'all don't even have to wait. If you want to come while I'm talking, I'm going to just give everything in my wallet right now to missions. If y'all want to come, it's a container on both sides. Uh, and everything in this particular offer. If you're giving missions, uh, these two gold containers on the platform, if you will uh, bring yours there. If you're giving online, you can do that right now. Just go to the giving tabs and give to uh, missions. You can give to missions. Every single cent of it, we're going to get it uh, to Jackson, Mississippi. Now, we are affiliates of the Red Cross. We are affiliates of other um, organizations. You, know, you can put it in the envelope. There's a missions tab on the envelope. The ushers have envelopes, so you can put it on the, um, in the envelope as well. Uh, but I do want to step up in this effort, Greater Harvest. Whatever we do, it's more than they have. Amen? Amen? And so we are definitely concerned um, about those that are in need. Also, I do want to ask your prayers. As I've asked you to pray for pastors, I also want to ask your prayer. Yes, come on, come on, come on, come on. I also want to ask your prayers for the family of um, uh, the Griggs family. Deacon Griggs has uh, lost his nephew. His nephew has transitioned, rather. His nephew has transitioned. Also, our own brother Greg Sanford has transitioned. And then we received a call on yesterday that our uh, brother Jerry Ivory, uh, members of this church, Greg Sanford and Jerry Ivory have transitioned. So please pray for those families. Y'all come on, bring them, bring the missions, bring the missions. People in Jackson, Mississippi need water, and we're going to help. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. And I'm saying amen because I am uh, trusting in the fact that you are not pulling from your uh, regular tithes and offering and shifting it into another category. Amen. 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 Greater Harvest is stepping up. Come on, Greater Harvest. Come on. Amen. Hey, man, come on, Greater Harvest. Come on. Amen. 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 Because we love that the Lord allows us to help others when they are in need. And we know that we cannot sow without reaping. So when the time comes and we are in need, we've got seed in the ground. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I do want to take a moment uh, b before we go forward in the service. I do want to take a moment to recognize, do we have anyone visiting with us today? Anyone that is a special guest today? Sir, will you stand up just so we can celebrate you? Welcome to Greater Harvest. We're so glad that you're here with us today. So glad that you came to be with us today. We see you with Brother Salisbury, so I'm sure I get to shake your hand before you leave. Amen. Come on, Greater Harvest, help us celebrate our guest today. I do have another celebration that is in order. I believe today is Grandparents Day. So if you are a grandparent, can you stand or wave your hand so we can all celebrate all the grandparents? Come on, come on. Great Harvest, we can make more noise than that. Come on and celebrate all the grandparents. <laughs> amen, amen. Um, and finally, uh, I've asked you to pray for pastors. I've asked you to pray for pastors, right? I, I have one last prayer request, and then we will uh, ask the praise team to prepare to lead us. Is Sister Plachette Polk in the room? Missionary Plachette Polk in the room? She's on the door. Okay. Missionary, you can make your way to the pulpit. We'll have you introduce our speaker today. You 
You can come on. So, Greater Harvest, I have one last prayer request for you before we move forward in the service. Uh, that prayer request, I've asked you to pray for pastors. I've asked you to pray for the families uh, that have been touched by death this week. I also want you to pray for a young man that we don't know his name. Uh, but Monday night, a young man kicked in one of the windows at the church and broke in. And as he broke in, uh, as far as what we could ob observe, he was very cool under pressure. He was very calm. Matter of fact, he was still on the property when the police came and was able to maneuver and not be detected. So I know the young man is very intelligent. I know the young man is calm under pressure. So he would be a good business person, be a good person. Uh, he just needs salvation. That's how, so that's the last prayer request I got for you today. I need you. We don't know his name, so you can't call his name out. But say, Lord, that young man that broke in Greater Harvest, save him. Because he broke in the right church. We're not going to get mad at him. We're not out to get him. Because God can get him better than we can get him. Amen. Amen. So I want you to join me this week in praying for that young man who broke in Greater Harvest because he broke in the right church. I believe the Lord, where the police can't arrest you, the Spirit of God can arrest you. Where, where, where the police can't make you a prisoner, Paul said, I, a prisoner of the Lord. It's a different kind of prison when God changes your life and puts you on a path to do better. Greater Harvest, will you help me pray? For a young man that's on the wrong path to have a Damascus Road experience and God turn him around and make him a win. Will y'all help me pray for that young man? That's all I'm asking you to do. Help me pray for that young man. Since the poke is coming, the praise team is going to take their place. Come on, missionary. Come on, missionary. We don't even have to sanitize because y'all the same household. Just going to raise the mic up and introduce our speaker for today. Good morning, Greater Harvest. Um, I'm going to present to some and introduce to others a man who the Lord has blessed me with. A man that loves the Lord. And not only does he love the Lord, he loves God's people. He reaches his hands far wide, not just in stature, but he opens his hands when God bless him that the blessing may flow through. I call him my sweetie. He's a gentle giant, so don't let the stature fool you. He loves the hugs of his sister, and he loves the fishing with his brother. I thank God for him. He prays before he makes any decision, great or small. But not only does he pray before making a decision, he waits to hear from the Lord. So again, I want to introduce to some and present to others my husband that God has blessed me with, Elder Ulysses Polk. Hallelujah. 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 All right, we don't have a mic here, but I just want to say I praise God for being here in this moment, this day, this time. God is so good to us, and I stand here with the privilege and the honor, the privilege and the honor, and blessings from our music department as we present to you our sermonic soloist on today. God has a word in this house on today. He is doing something great for us on today. How many of you know that? Now, it is with delight that I'll introduce her. She's a soloist from this church, the Greater Harvest Church of God in Christ. She's been a member here since she was born. She's been here all of her life. Uh, just to tell you a little bit more about her, she's been here, she served faithfully as a choir member. She's even held the office of interim music, minister of music. Also, she's a praise leader and worshiper. You know, with that, she comes from a great family. She's the eldest da daughter of our own minister, Patricia Nams, 
and the granddaughter of the late missionary, Lona Lee Owens. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Sources have told me that she was also a prayer warrior and a great musician, had an awesome voice. But with all of those things said, she's a great wife. She's a mother of three, and she's a medical professional. And I love her charismatic spirit. Whenever you walk in the room, you hear music because she's always humming or singing because it's down in her soul. She has a beautiful anointed voice and her love for God and her passion for music has fueled the gift that God has given her as a singer and a songwriter of gospel and inspirational music. God has truly enlarged her territory and the best is yet to come. She said, make it quick. Today, I share with you our own sermonic soloist who will share her message in her new single entitled, God Does All Things Well. Please receive our psalmist, our messenger in song, Angela Caston. All right. Y'all feel free to just say something you to the Lord. Tell him how you love him, how he's awesome. He's wonderful. God, you are kind. And we just come today to sing about how you do everything well. There's no fault in him. There's no failure. He's an awesome God. And we believe you do all things well, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Oh, it started with the creation of heaven and earth. Then you spoke, you spoke a word, and you watched it give birth to the beginning of the plan that would redeem man and snatch all power from the enemy's hand and all of your splendid glory you sent your son for me and I've known you to be everything that you said you would be you do all things well 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 so I choose to stand oh. on your word, oh. for I know it oh. to be true. Oh. Every worry, oh. every fear, oh. Lord, I give it, oh. I give it to you. Oh. And I know oh. you will be there, oh. just like you, you said you would.
to bring me through. Yeah, I trust you, Jesus. I believe in you. Yeah, I trust you, Jesus, to see me through. To see me through. Oh, I trust I you, trust Jesus. Now. that he doesn't do, that he can't do well. So thank God uh, for all that he's done, especially in my life. I give honor to him because without him, I would be nothing. I give honor to the pastor, our pastor, Pastor Renato Ward, who was led by the Holy Spirit to, to have me come to speak to you on today. And there's a there's something that I'll share with you later about that. I give honor to his lovely wife, Lady Christina Ward, affectionately. Yeah. Affectionately known as Lady K. I give honor to my late bishop because without him, I wouldn't be standing here on today, serving in the capacity that I am as an elder before I became ordained as an elder and serving as an elder without him, his tenacity, his courage, his drive, his ability to listen to the word of God and to follow his heart and God's heart, I'm standing here today. So I love my bishop To his lovely wife, the songbird of the South, Mother Julia Scott Ward. I bless her on today. To the assistant pastor, Eddie Elder, Elder Eddie Scott. And to his good thing, evangelist missionary, Lynette Scott. And to my lovely wife who introduced me on today. She, she's someone special. For almost eight years, she still makes me laugh and smile. She still jokes every day. She says something to put a smile on my face. And it just, nothing just didn't happen. It's just a part of her character, and I love her for that. And to all the, the people of God, I'm always humbled to stand before you and before God's people. Our scripture will be found in 1 Samuel, coming from the 15th chapter. I'll be reading verses 1 through 3, and I'll skip down to verses 20 through 21. 
That's 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 3, and verses 20 through 21. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And the Word of God says this. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek, Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that, he, that they have and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Skipping down to verse 20, and it says, And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amaleks, Am Amalekites, rather. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And I know last week the pastor told you the message would be nevertheless. But the title of this message is Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this word that you've given me. For your people, Lord God, I ask, Lord God, that you remove me, Lord God, that they see only you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Allow your Holy Spirit to speak through me, Lord God, as you've given me this message for your people, Lord God. Touch their hearts, Lord God. Break open this, the fallow ground, Lord God. Let them hear your word and receive it, Lord God. That they may apply it to their lives, Lord God. That they may go from here better than they've, they came, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 You may have your seats. How many of you know just being obedient is all you need to do. There's no need to add to it and no need to take away from it. Sometimes when self gets in the way, it can mess up things or cause us to take a turn that we really didn't have to make. And as a result, what could have gone for the better now takes a turn for the worse. As a child or as an adult, I'm sure one, at one time or another you have said, had I just done what mom or dad instructed me to do to the letter, I would not be in the mess that I'm in today. Or had I just done what my wife asked me to do, I would have been better off. We've all been there at one time or another, and King Saul was no different. If God or the Holy Spirit gives you a task to do, and you know it had to be God himself, it behooves you to do what he asks you to do because if not, there could be consequences. God is the Alpha and the Omega. 
the beginning and the end. He knows all, meaning he knows the past, he knows the present, and he's quite aware of our future. And I believe he is a God of second chances because he's merciful. But of those of us who knows to do better and do not, God help you. I myself had to repent to God and, and my, repent, my repentance was not due to the fact that I did not do what he asked because my heart was there to do what he asked when the Holy Spirit told the pastor that I needed to bring this word. My repentance came from the fact of not trusting him to give me the word that he told me to speak. Although I had no idea what I would say to you all on today or what it would be but for not waiting patiently until he gave it to me was what I repented for. Regardless of whether it was only hours before I was able to present it before you. You see, I got up early Saturday morning a couple of weeks ago. I laid before God asking him, what should I say? So God knew my heart. I had a lot of things going on. I was about to go on a trip. And I had several messages to choose from that I already started on. But none of them stood out initially. Then I settled on this one. Woke up 5.30 in the morning and hour after hour went by. 5 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, and nothing came to me. Although I had a portion of it done, like I said, I had six messages that I had before me that I started on, but I never finished. But then on Sunday morning, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord woke me up at the same time, 5.30 in the morning, the exact time that I woke up on the Saturday. And at that time, now it was early Sunday morning, and his word, the word of God came to me. And I began to write this message, and I actually completed it the Sunday in which I initially supposed to have given it. I printed it out. My wife can verify this. I brought my laptop to church, but it didn't happen. I didn't speak. Unfortunately, although I tried to articulate it, that I was ready now, you, knew, you all didn't get the chance to hear this message on that day. But God is a merciful God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And I truly believe he is a God of second chances. Yes, thank you. And I believe this moment or test was not for me only, but believe it or not, it was for some of you on today. I'm here to tell you, don't let fear, pride, arrogance, uncertainty, uncomfortableness, the list goes on to stand in your way of what thus said the Lord. If he said that it is your task, he is more than capable of allowing you to perform that task. 
And regardless of what you feel or how you feel as you complete the task, if you did it in the way in which he said to do it, your mission was accomplished. Back to the message. Saul was given a command from God by the way of the prophet Samuel. Let me ask the question, who was the king? Saul, correct? We all know the king has the last word. And what he says goes, am I correct? And if God places you in a position of authority or sends a word by the way of someone and you know that the person had no way of knowing what you were going through or what you was tasked to do, you knew at that moment in time it had to be from God. Amen? If God places you in a position of authority and gives you a task, he expects you to lead and to do that task. Amen? Amen. And if he gives you a command, I suggest you do it. Those Bible scholars of ours know in the book of Exodus, the 17th chapter, 14th verse through the 16th verse that God told Moses to write down his saying in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua he said he that being God said he will utterly put out of remembrance of Amalek from generation to generation. Say with me, it was foretold in his plan. This was stated years and years before Saul was even considered to be king. What God was going to do to the Malachites. Saul was instructed by the prophet Samuel to smite the word smite means to attack Amalek. And not only attack them, but to utterly destroy all that they have and spared them not. Say with me, God was serious. And when God says something, he means it. It may not happen when Moses was living, although Moses was given the word, but if God says something, rest assured, he settles it. We tend to question God's word because in our small mind or scope of thinking, what he said seems impossible based on our conditions or circumstances that is occurring around us at that given time. I'll give you an example. God said this job would be this young lady's job. But they brought this person in that has a degree in this and a degree in that. And the young lady who was also applying for the same job was still working on her degree. Her degree that I'm speaking of she was yet trying to figure out how to complete it. Needless to say, the young lady who did not have it all together got the job. Because they saw something in her that they could work with for a long term that would benefit the company for years and years to come, although the one that was experienced would only give them a few years because she was a little older and more experienced. 
But the young lady who God said that job was yours will give them far more years than they ever thought they would have. If God said it, that settles it. He will bring it to pass. Now getting back to the text, but as the story went on, the first mistake Saul made was he saved Agag, the king of the Amalekites. If you read this text in its entirety, the man of God told Saul specifically to utterly destroy the Amalekites. Did he not? The word utterly means completely. That left no room for remnants. God told him, don't leave no man or woman, no infant, no suckling. That's a young unweaned animal or an animal still nursing. No ox and sheep, camel or ass. He meant everything and every living thing. Everybody. Don't leave nobody. See, this is a promise that he gave to Moses long before Saul came on the scene. See, God is, like I said, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows the past. He's quite familiar with your present. And he definitely knows your future. For some reason, we as people of God choose to listen to parts of God's word that seemingly be benefit us. But the part that seemingly doesn't, that doesn't, or the part we just don't like, we tend to ignore or act as if it didn't pertain to us. Amen. In other words, we tend to pick and choose what parts of the Bible or God's word that we are comfortable with. And the uncomfortable part, we tend to avoid because it may cause a disruption in our life, amen? We as the people of God tend to call on him in times of need for everything. And when he answers us, or gives us an answer that we are seeking from him, we tend to alter his plan to fit ours, meaning our perception or our way of thinking. Or we as a people tend to execute everything he told us in order to get out of a situation that we find ourselves in. And the minute the change comes, or the relief comes, we tend to relax in our praying, our fasting, our work in his vineyard. We stop exercising the gift that he gave you. Amen. We tend to forget that he brought us out of a situation. We tend to stop seeking him as we once did. We don't use what he brought us out of to help someone else. Life is back to normal, and that's all that matters. And God gets the glory for only a moment. And that testimony becomes an afterthought. Have you ever considered the fact that he took you through something so that you someday can help someone else? You see, our mindset tends to change when our circumstances change. Reminds me time and time again, I personally have witnessed individuals in dire straits. 
they're about to lose their car or home or the electricity is about to be turned off. The AC went out and the word of God speaks to you. Don't hold back good from those in need when it is in your power to do so. Have you been there? Have anyone been there and the word of God speaks to you in that fashion? And you, I'm referring to the one that is on the receiving end now. Tell the person who God has sent your way that if you give me so much to get past this moment, when I get my check or my money at this particular point in time, I will pay you back. Have you been in that situation before? Have you heard that from someone? How many of you have had someone tell you this and when that time comes and they receive that money, their mindset changes? And the thought of using it for something else that they needed or wanted overrides the fact that they told you they would give it back to you at the point of time. I know you all have been there before, especially if it's been a family member or who you thought was a good close friend. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact that Saul heard everything the man of God told him and that God would deliver the Amalekites into his hand. But he also said, when it is done, leave nothing. Utterly destroy everything. Victory was placed in Saul's hands as the leader of the people. And yet, when he saw that the people viewed the sheep, the oxen, the camels, the asses, as spoils that were good to have, that he regarded, disregarded the latter part of his commandment of leaving nothing alive. And he began to justify keeping what he was told to destroy by saying the people made a sacrifice of the best for you, God. Who was he afraid of? That's why I asked the question, who was Saul? Was he not the king? He should have been afraid of God rather than being intimidated by the people of God. Say with me, obedience, obedience. is better than sacrifice. Yeah. See, I view God as the master chess player. He has several moves and consequences and counter moves based on the situations or choices we make as individuals. And when you may be going through something now, or what you may be going through something now, it may benefit someone else along the way in the future if you completely follow God's word. You see, God sees all and knows all. And if he says to do something, regardless of what we think or imagine how it may benefit us, you need to do it. What we may think is good, God always has something much better much better if we just believe in his word. Amen. That is why time and time again I find this particular scripture that I'm about to say always in my messages. God is trying to tell me something and you as well. And that's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. 
and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, not some, all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. We, just like the children of Israel, suffer many things because we fail to listen to the whole will of God. In not doing so, it often comes with consequences. Sometimes prayer and the asking of forgiveness with a sincere heart touches God's heart. But sometimes it does not. And for that, we must suffer those consequences as Saul did. The prophet Samuel told him, and I'm paraphrasing here, but what did God say to you? Did he not say utterly destroy everything, leaving nothing? Just as the people are to obey you, you are to obey God. Needless to say, to say, God then sought a new king, still giving his people what they asked for, although it was an insult to him because God was their ultimate king who only wanted to give them everything they ever desired and needed. He just wanted them to follow his commandments do his will. You see, the remnant of us catch on, but a great number of us have yet to learn who is in control and who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, that can be found in Ephesians, the third chapter, the 20th verse, that being Jesus and the Holy Ghost. We as a people of God need to just be obedient rather than sacrifice so much for a short, gratifying moment. We are yet much like the children of Israel, although we think we are not. When I think about the promised land of Canaan for the children of Israel, God told them to occupy the land that was filled with milk and honey and destroy the inhabitants and all the idols and so forth. Why? Because he knew the inhabitants that presently occupying the land, the promised land that he was going to give them, worship idol God and practice customs that were inhumane. And God knew this would cause the children of Israel to sin. God just doesn't say anything just to be saying. It has a reason. He has a purpose. He can see what you can't see. And because it doesn't make any sense to you, trust me, it makes a whole lot of sense to him. Thanks of God, be obedient to the voice of God. I promise you it, it will not steer you in the wrong direction. Everything that looks good is not always good. Whether that be a female or a male. Whether it be a new car or whatever it may be, everything that looks good isn't good. Especially when it doesn't come from God. But whatever he gives you, no one can take it away unless you give it away. When you know to do good and choose wrong, it comes with consequences. I'm sure many of you can attest to the fact that there were choices that you had to make. And because you made the right choice, great things followed. And when you look back, had you chose otherwise, 
the outcome would have been not so favorable. How many of you have that testimony? I brought you to this message to say this. As you humble yourself before God in prayer, and the Holy Spirit speaks to you, know that obedience is better than sacrifice. Be blessed. Thank you. Will your heart and soul say yes? And will your spirit just Say yes, oh, 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 there is more that I require of you, hey, hey. will your heart and soul say yes? If I ask you to obey my word, oh yeah, will your heart and soul say yeah, 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 yeah. If I told you what, what I really need from you Will your heart and soul say yes So I say yes Oh yes My soul says for repentance obedience is better than sacrifice and Elder Pope made that very plainly today but there are those of us in the room right now 
that we have not fully obeyed the instructions the Lord has given us. And in those small details, I don't know if he read the entire portion, but just saw not following the small details, yes. the Lord rejected him. In the small details, the Lord rejected him. He did not repent. The Lord rejected him. David did much worse. But when the word came to him, he repented. And the Lord forgave him. There were consequences, but the Lord forgave him. Yes. And so today, it's a hard altar call. But if you know that you have not fully obeyed the Lord in areas of instructions, will you meet me at the altar? Because there are some things that the Lord has told me to do. And I did most of it. Not all of it. What did I cost myself? What did I cost myself for, for not following even the details? There are some things the Lord instructed me to do, and I didn't do all of it. What did I cost you? What did I cost this ministry? What did I cost this community? What did I cost my family? Yeah. And I am 100% sure I'm not the only one in the building. So I'm inviting you to meet me at the altar so that we can repent together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, spread across the altar. Hallelujah. My answer is This time I'll say yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This time I'll Come on, say spread across. Yeah. Spread across. Mm, it's me. In the moments oh, when we're making the decision of making we somehow we somehow feel like our way is better than God's way or whatever we, it is that we're choosing is better, but there's no way to measure the consequences of disobedience. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's no way to limit the consequences of disobedience. And so today, we're just going to ask God, I'm going to borrow David's words and I'm going to speak them over all of us from Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me. Oh God. oh God, according to thy loving kindness, according, to thy loving kindness according, unto according unto the multitude, the multitude of, thy tender mercies, of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, blot out my transgressions wash me throughly wash me through from my iniquity, from my iniquity and, cleanse me and cleanse me from my sin. From my for I, acknowledge For I acknowledge my transgressions, my transgressions. And, my sin and my sin is ever before me, ever before me. Against, thee. against thee. Thee only, thee only. Have, I sinned have I sinned and done this evil, done this evil. In, thy sight. in thy sight, that thou, that thou mightest be, might be justified when you speak, when you speak. and be clear when you judge. And be clear when you judge. Behold, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, I was shaping in iniquity. And, in sin, and in sin did my mother conceive me. My mother conceived me. Behold, Behold, you desire truth, you desire truth in, the in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. And in the hidden part, you shall make me, you shall make me to, know wisdom. to know wisdom. Purge me, Purge me with, hyssop, with hyssop and I shall, and I shall be clean. Be Wash me, Wash me, and I shall, and I shall be, whiter than, be snow. whiter than snow. Make me, Make me to, hear joy to hear joy and gladness, and gladness that, the bones that the bones which you have broken, which you have broken may, rejoice. may rejoice. Hide thy face, Hide thy face from, my sin from my sin and blot out, and blot out all my iniquity. All my iniquity. Create, in me Create in me a clean heart, a clean heart. Oh, God. oh God. 
and renew, and renew a, right a right spirit within me. Within me. Cast me, Catch me not, away not away from thy presence, from presence. and take not Thy Holy Spirit Thy from, Holy me. Spirit from me. me, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, of thy salvation. And, uphold and uphold me with thy, thy free, spirit. free spirit. Now let's thank the Lord for restoring Lord. us. Let's thank the Lord for another chance. Let's thank the Lord for an opportunity to repent and receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, thank him. Before you go yeah. to your seat, just lift your hands and thank you. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for another chance. I thank yeah. you for another opportunity. I thank you for forgiving me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now go back to your seats. Give him a yes. Give him a yes as you go. Yeah. We thank God for the word today. Yes. We thank God for the word today. As Elder Pope was sharing, he was sharing with you a, a, a appeal. There were some things, you may be seated, you may be seated. There were some things that were, uh, I mentioned to you already. There are some things that are going on in my body. I hadn't figured it out. Doctors hadn't figured it out. Uh, but I called on Elder Pope a couple of Sundays ago to speak. And uh, I called on him because the Lord led me to call on him. Yes. And as he said, he has six messages that he had been working on, but at that point, they, none of them were completed. And so he shared about that. But Elder Pope, I believe you're absolutely right. That was not just your lesson. You took the lesson for us. Yes. Because today, I was convicted by you sharing how you didn't stand, trusting that God would provide when he had sent the moment for you. And I, like many of us in the room, I don't always trust that God is going to do it when I'm standing in the face of it. You know, when you're standing at that Red Sea, right. even though you got the rod in your hand, even though you know what God, God's already done miracle after miracle after miracle, and you got testimony after testimony, it's something about this human stuff when you're standing right there in the face of it that sometimes you will forget who God is looking at the stuff that's in front of you. But Elder, thank you for encouraging me that if God brings me to it, if I just obey him and I don't mess it up, he'll bring me through it with a testimony and not will I go through it? Other yeah. folks will be blessed. Thank you, Elder, for taking the test for yes, us. She yes, she will. Yes, she will. Yes, she will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, she will bring you through it. Yes, she will. I'm literally facing things right now and I'm not at full strength. I'm not at full mental capacity. And I got more loads coming on me. Yes. And all I can hear now from what Elder Polk said, if I just obey God and work out all the other work stuff. Work it out, work it out, work it out. If, <laughs> if I just obey him and don't focus on the details, he will work out the details. In the midst of my test, it's my test to trust him. 
because I can't do it in my strength anyway. All right. Hallelujah. I felt that. I felt that. I know he will. Hey. <laughs> I felt that. So there are others of us in here. Digging right there, others of us in here. That there is an opportunity, a moment, a situation that has arisen. And we feel ill prepared for the moment. We feel overwhelmed and undermatched for the moment. And the word came today to just obey. Just obey. Obey, obey on the front end obey. is better than sacrifice on the back end. Let me just. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you are here today, you have not accepted salvation. Now, we all just repented for disobeying. But if you have not specifically, individually received the Lord as your personal Savior, that's a different conversation we need to have. Is there anybody here today that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Is there anybody here today that has not? You don't know the, the Lord in the pardoning of your sins. If you, in other words, if you left here, today and drove out to Winchester and for some reason life left your body mm. would you wake up on the other side at peace with the Lord yes. if there's anybody here you could come on down I'd love to I'd love to change your direction today mother Tucker I'd love to help somebody yes. Yes. meet the Lord today I'd love to see somebody get saved today all right, all right, all right. House is secure. Listen, if you hear, ooh, that's old school. That's old school, so Scott. If you hear, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just need y'all to help me make some noise because Lola is 10 years old and she just accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Will you turn around, wave at your brothers and sisters, just turn around. Hallelujah. 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 So Scott, will you take them into the prayer room? And we'll get some information. I don't know, Sister Stewart has, Sister Stewart, can you get some paper and pencil? And oh, Jameson is here. Okay. Jameson, will you meet them in the prayer room? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, it's a celebration going on in heaven right now for a 10 year old. Hey, rejoice, 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 rejoice. 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 Listen, 
Elder Crowley is ahead of me because he's taking a, a lap. But if you got a child or a grandchild yes. in your family that you know needs to be saved, will you just walk a lap or run a lap, Woo. jog a lap or try to lap? We're going to run proxy for God saving our children. Hallelujah. Hey, rejoice, April, rejoice, come on rejoice, in and take rejoice, a lap. Rejoice, 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 children in your home, please anoint them. Please pray God's protection over them and his will for their life come to pass. Those of you that are already at home, if you have blessed oil in your home and children in your home, I want you to anoint them. I want you to cover them. I want you to pray for them. We have seen um, terrible tragedies in this city the past two weeks. And my heart is saddened by the accounts, but my heart is also troubled because I wonder what would have happened if the saints had witnessed to those young men before they got to that violent place in their lives. If somebody had prayed for them and tarried for them and led them to Christ before they started going in and out of 
the prison system, before those, those demons started working in their lives, what would have happened if somebody laid hands on those, them as young boys and played the blood of Jesus over them and put some scriptures in their, in their mouths and, and the Lord's word in their heart? What, what would have happened if somebody would have been there to show the love and the light of Jesus Christ? Maybe innocent people wouldn't have gotten shot last week. Maybe a school teacher wouldn't have been killed the week before. What, what would have happened if the church, if the saints were just diligent at taking back the souls that the enemy had? What? what? And so that's, that's, the, that's what's troubling me. Because I'm trying to figure out how do we reach, how do we canvas this neighborhood now so that another young person doesn't follow that same path? How do we canvas this neighborhood now and tell people there's a different way? How do we go to your uh, grandchildren, your nieces and nephews, and make sure that they know that God loves them and they don't have to get a gun and they don't have to join the gang, that God has a plan for their lives? How do we do that? So I need you to help me by laying hands on the ones you can reach. The ones we can't reach, we're going to ask God to reach them. But the ones we can reach, we can just put some oil on their heads. We can just pray God's will. We can get in their ear and speak life. We can watch over them and keep them close. Amen? Amen? Amen. Keep them close, Stacey. Keep them close. Keep it. That's right. Keep it. I know they're going to talk about you because that's a big old boy in your lap. That's the best place for him to be. Because he knows he's loved. He don't have to go out in the street and try to find no love. That's right. That's right. All right. Thank God again. A 10-year-old got saved in the house today. Hallelujah. 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 If you're here today and you don't have a church home, or if you're online and you don't have a church home, if you will come to the altar, if you feel led to join this church, we would love to take you in and love on you. If, you, if the Lord is moving on you to join this church, obedience is better than sacrifice. Come yeah, on and obey the spirit of the Lord this morning. If you're online and watching membership at ghcmemphis.org, Yes, I've got to memorize it. Membership at GACMemphis.org. It should be on the screen. It should be on the screen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Y'all help me welcome our new brother, Reginald Ingram, to Greater Harvest Church. Come on, Greater Harvest. So we're so glad to have you. Our membership director is right there. If you walk to her, she's going to get some information for you. We're going to get you on the road. And uh, Elder Foster, will you go with them? Because the men got a fish fry coming up, and we need to make sure you on the list for the fish fry. All right, now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Soul saved, Lord, add to the church. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. I feel like celebrate right there, boy. I feel. I feel. Y'all, let's just take a few a few seconds to give God some praise. Will y'all just? Go ahead and turn it up and let's just have the sound of celebration, the sound of jubilation, the sound of praise in the house of the Lord. 
Aleluia! Aleluia! É glória, glória, glória! Aleluia! Aleluia! É glória! Aleluia! Aleluia! Aleluia, aleluia, glory, 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 aleluia, 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 Lord, I thank you, <laughs> Lord, I thank you, aleluia, aleluia, aleluia. Aleluia, 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 aleluia. Okay, we just TJ, you keep that bass drum going. We're gonna go home off of this today. Listen, I'm gonna tell you one more announcement. One more announcement. I met with the medical and health professionals this week, and we are no longer asking you to, we're no longer requesting that you call in for pre-screening. You don't have to call in for pre-screening, amen. You can just come to church. It may take a little longer to get through the line because we're not doing the pre-screening, but uh, we are no longer asking you to call, and the nurses, uh, our health professionals, they are working through the changes in uh, COVID handling from the CDC and what they're doing in the hospitals. Uh, they have more information than I do. They have more information than you do if you don't work in the hospital. So we are still uh, leaning on them to guide us through this. But we're no longer asking you to call in. So those of you who have been calling in diligently every week and those of you who haven't been calling in every week, <laughs> will you just clap your hands for progression? Will you just yeah. thank the Lord for progression? Yeah. yeah. So, um, Missionary Stewart, I got it. This Wednesday night, we, yeah, y'all keep it going, keep it going. This Wednesday night is the first uh, Good Shepherd service. And I would like to see you. Now, the Good Shepherd Committee has given you instructions. There's a letter. If you haven't gotten it in the mail already, you should get it tomorrow with more details about it. But it is my desire that you come to the service. Whether or not you can encourage your pastor, bless your pastor, anything like that, if you just come to the service, that encourages me. Yeah. Yeah, you can say, Pastor, we love you, we support you, we praying for you from home. But if you say it from home, unless you call me on the phone, I can't hear you. But if you come in the house and say it, we all be in here together. I hear you say it. I hear you say, Pastor, we love you, we appreciate you. Amen. So that's this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pastor Renee Stevenson. Uh, if you will start to arrive at 6:45, so that you can be pre-screened. Uh, not pre-screen, but you can be screened and come in. And it will not be a long service, so if your children got homework and all that, uh, we plan to have you home by 8.30, amen? Yeah, 7 o'clock yeah. to 8.30, we plan to, amen, amen, <laughs> amen. Bishop Lee Ward's fingerprints on this ministry. We don't waste time. We timely, amen, amen. So we are preparing to give. I'm going to ask God's blessing over our giving. And uh, we're going to pray our benediction at the same time. Y'all, please be prayerful and be diligent. Um, there are so many things happening in our city. Please be prayerful. Please be diligent. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Amen. And if the Lord, if you sense the Spirit leading you to do or not do something, as Elder Pope said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. 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 The Lord may be shielding and protecting you from something that you don't know is coming just by getting your attention and say, stay home. Or getting your attention and say, go a different way. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Please wait for the ushers and deacons to serve you and give you directions on how to exit. They're going to serve you and give you directions on how to exit. We're going to pray God's blessing. If you have uh, your tithes and offering, will you lift that up? 
If you don't have tithes and offerings, will you lift up your wallet or your purse? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to uh, go through the prosperity declaration by Bishop John Wynn. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Not a doubter. Not a doubter. I'm, a giver, I'm a giver. Not a taker. Not a taker. Father, God Father God promised to give seed to the sower. And I am a sower. Therefore, I make this confession of faith. This is my money seed. Sanctified unto the Lord for the greater harvest. This is my money seed. Anointed to attract gifts, raises, property, estates, checks in the mail, loan repayments, increase. In my, in my banking account, government checks, government checks. stocks, Stop. gold, gold. Silver. silver, precious stones, precious stones. Lost, money found. lost money found, and favor, and favor. in negotiation, in negotiation. Exceedingly. exceedingly and abundantly, and abundantly. More, more than I, than I can, ever can ever ask or imagine. Or imagine. I, hold seat I hold this seed in my possession, in my possession. As, a as a token of my account. Of with the, Father. with the Father. From this day forward, this day forward I, declare I declare money, money come, to come to me. From this day forward, this day forward I, become I become infinite money. Infinite money. Freely, freely, I receive, I receive in, abundance, in abundance and freely, and freely I, give I give in abundance. In abundance. Father, we thank you now for keeping your word as we bring our finances, as we bring our gifts, our seeds, your tithes, your offering. As we bring it, God, we know that you will keep your word and that you will do exactly what you said. And so we thank you as we bless your house, you bless our house. And Father, as we leave this place, we pray you shield us from the distracted driver, the enraged driver. God, we pray now you shield us and protect us from those who mean to do harm on the highways and the byways. Allow us to arrive to our destination safely and we thank you in advance for that which you are doing in our lives we pray comfort to our grieving families and healing to the sick in the name of jesus christ amen, amen. and amen. amen our church is a blessed church our church is a blessed church and i see a greater harvest in your future come on and praise the lord hallelujah He's moving, 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 Elders, please meet me in the fellowship hall. All elders, please meet me in the fellowship hall. He's working. He's working. He's working. And it's done. 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 It's done.